So hey beautiful people, what I am about to tell you may be the most significant discovery that has hit the food industry in years. Today I'm going to talk about a certain type of milk that could be a complete game changer for hundreds of thousands of people. This is a significant video and you are not going to want to miss it. So hey there, this is Lindy Ford, registered dietitian, clinical and licensed nutritionist, and nutrition detective. So if you like this video, please just give it a thumbs up, as well as hitting that bell. It will tell you when new videos are coming out. And please subscribe to this channel. We would love to have you in our YouTube family. I absolutely love all of your comments and your encouragement and even your advice on great places to buy really good food items and things like that. Now there is a type of milk that is sweeping the country and that is the US but actually other countries as well and I'm going to tell you what other countries you can find this milk in and I know in the last I'd say three to six months in my town which I don't live in a huge metropolitan area like I used to to, but you could find it in almost every major grocery store chain and that is very exciting and that is dun, 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 that is a2 milk and let me just tell you about a2 milk but before I do that I want to say that no one no one needs milk to be healthy, okay? That is a myth that has been perpetrated on the, I know the US population through the very clever marketing tactics like Got Milk with the USDA and the Dairy Council. They have kind of been in this uh, strange relationship for many, many years telling us that if we don't drink milk, we're not gonna have strong bones and teeth. That is a myth. In the countries that get the least amount of dairy, like a lot of Asian countries, they have the least amount of osteoporosis. You don't need dairy to be healthy, but we do love our dairy. I love dairy. I grew up on dairy. I love it. And I can tell you that, you know, I use it. I don't use it very often. I mean, I don't even drink milk. I do use a little bit of of heavy cream in the morning in my coffee and I'll use butter but I don't I don't drink milk but I do use it sometimes in my cookie. So what is A2 dairy? It's real milk. It's real dairy. It is coming from cows and not from nuts like almond milk or coconut milk or whatever. It is real milk. Goat, sheep and buffalo milk or cheese is actually already A2 dairy. There is no A1 dairy with those so you're perfectly safe eating those. It's funny because I have a lot of my patients say oh I can I can do goat you know goat's milk but I can't do regular conventional milk. The difference is in the protein. Now it's really interesting and I've been saying this for years um, nobody's been listening but I have been saying this for years when people tell me that they are lactose intolerant I say well that might be true but it is probably more the case that you are casein intolerant and that casein is coming from A1 dairy. So many years ago all cows all cows were A2 cows. They were the healthy cows, the ones that didn't make the certain kind of protein that I'm going to tell you about in just a minute. And I, I kind of call this like the heirloom milk. Um, it's kind of like if you were to eat an heirloom tomato, which is really the only tomato I like to buy, is the ugly tomatoes, you know, with all the knots and crazy colors. The, that is an heirloom variety. That is almost like it's been around for years and years, has not been genetically mutated in any way and is, I think, better tasting and healthier. Well, that's what these cows are. They have not, the A2 cows have not gone through a man-made mutation like the A1s. In the U.S., the predominant milk is coming, about maybe 80 to 90 percent is coming from A1 cows and those are the black cows, okay? Those are the Holstein cows. And in Asia, in Africa, Switzerland, India, and New Zealand, 
completely now in New Zealand. They've gone completely over to the A2, uh, A2 cows. Those are the brown cows and they only produce A2 milk. Very interesting. In the U.S., the, the Guernsey cows, Jersey cows, and the Normandy cows are the a2 cows that we are getting our A2 milk from. So what's the difference? What is the big difference between A1 and A2 milk? Remember, it's all about that protein. So an A1 um, protein is digested in the small intestine. And here's the kicker, guys. Here's the biggie. And this is the reason you may have problems with conventional milk. It produces a peptide. And, and, and what a peptide is, is just like a protein fragment. And that is called BCM7. It's actually beta casomorphin, or you can just, we're just going to call it BCM7. Only A1 make, has BCM7. A2, no BCM7. Now, when the intestines absorb that BCM7, it goes into the bloodstream and that's when all the trouble begins. We get a lot of issues from that. What are the problems? Well, the number one, which is actually not the worst problem, but it's just the, 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 the bloating and the gas and the achy stomach and all of the, all of the digestive issues that A1, A1 has that people used to think was lactose, okay? In other countries, when we have immigrants that come from other countries like India to our country, they will say American milk will make you sick. These are people that are used to drinking milk, but they'll say that the American milk makes them sick. The other thing is that there is a link to A1 milk and autoimmune issues. And the big autoimmune issue is diabetes 1. We used to call it juvenile diabetes. We now call it diabetes 1, which is actually an autoimmune problem. Completely different, completely different disease than diabetes 2. There was a researcher. His name is Dr. Richard Deef, and he is from Northeastern University and he has linked A1 milk to not only autoimmune issues but to coronary artery disease, an increase in autism. It's very interesting. I, I saw many, many uh, studies and sightings on the fact that autistic children, they really urinate out. If you give them A1 milk, I mean they're going to have more than the average BCM7 coming out of their urine. It just flows right out of them. And on top of that, when parents take that A1 milk out of their diet, they do much better cognitively. And that goes for ADHD kids as well. So if you have a kid with autism or ADHD, take that conventional dairy out of their diet. See how they do with that. Also, it increases the incidence of di diabetes too. And it increases inflammation. You can see that. You can actually see that in your blood work. In people who drink a lot of A1 milk, they take their blood and they have greater inflammatory markers. Okay, what is the benefit of A2 milk? Just the opposite. Just the opposite of all of the negatives of A1, you're going to get less inflammation. The GI issues are not going to be there. Easier on digestion. The structure is similar to breast milk. It's much more similar than A1 milk. It also has more MCT, which is medium chain triglycerides. I talked about this with grass-fed beef. I'll and meat, I'll, I'll link this below, but that increases your metabolism, help, helps your waistline, also increases your brain function. Don't we all need an increase in our brain function? It also has more vitamin A, which is great for immunity, it's great for your skin, looking glowing and lovely, and also, this is something I, I was just floored by, it has or increases glutathione, which is a really, really important um, nutrient in your body that decreases as you age, but it, it increases the detox pathways of the body. So it, it helps with the detoxification systems of the body, which is so important. It gives you better, better brain function, like I said. In fact, they had a study where they, they compared A1 people who drink A1 milk to A2 
people and the A1 people took longer to process information and made more errors on a test. Interesting. So how do you get A2 dairy? Well, many farms are, like I said, they are transitioning over to A2 dairy. It's going to take a couple years for them to do that, again, because they have to separate their herds out and they have to do genetic testing, which isn't which isn't easy. Um, but every major store now has it and that is really really cool um, a lot of the a lot of the farms like to advertise a lot of them the I like to just I would rather get anything from a local farm or go to a farmers market that's a great place to get a2 dairy and they love to advertise the fact that they're a non Holstein farm that they are only Jersey Guernsey or Normandy cows because and and you know some of it's because of the a2 thing but some of it is just because that milk tastes better and people like it better. So what's the deal with butter and cheese? I know before I talk about butter and cheese, I forgot to say this about dairy. Never, never buy even A2 dairy in a low fat 2% skim form. I'm going to link that link below about the dangers of skim and low fat milk. Always do it in a whole form if you're going to. But what about butter and cheese? Well, I actually asked the grocer about that. We don't see butter and cheese A2. I'm hoping in the future we may see it, but it's kind of a moot point because it is. It has very little BCM7 in it anyway. It's mostly fat. Like cheese and butter are mostly fat, so they don't have those protein fragments in there. So it would be better if they were A2, but right now, if you do grass-fed and or organic on those, you'll be fine. Um, are, is A2 organic and grass-fed? Well, it's not necessarily. If you get it from a local farm, it probably is, but it's not certified USDA organic or it is not necessarily grass fed. But here's what the A2 website said. It is not treated with growth hormones, RBST, or antibiotics. And these are farms that are certified validus, which means that they are an independent animal welfare auditor. Okay, so they treat their cows nice and they don't use the extra antibiotics and hormones and all of that craziness. And someday I'm sure we're going to have A2 grass-fed milk and that will be a wonderful, wonderful day. There is a controversy out there. Of course there's a controversy. I mean, if you are a conventional dairy farmer and you have 300 head of A1 cattle, you know, some might have some A2 genetics in them, but it's going to take you years to transition your farm over to an A2. You're you're going to have a little problem with this. Okay. I understand that that's your livelihood, but I think it would be very wise for every A1 farmer to start transitioning because I really believe it's the wave of the future. I think in 10 years, it's going to flip flop. We're going to have more A2 dairy than we are going to have A1 dairy. And that's going to be a good day. So what is the cost? Of course, it's going to be higher because there's just not as many of these types of cows, but it's not that much higher. I think for this half gallon, I paid about $4 for the half gallon. And that's kind of how it goes. But for a full gallon, it's about anywhere. It depends on the part of the country that you're in anywhere from seven to nine dollars a gallon which yeah it's it's going to be more than your five dollar a gallon conventional milk but if it's going to be that much healthier it might be a place that you'd want to put your money here's what i want to say right now i'm probably never going to buy conventional milk again since a2 is so readily available i'm actually going to go to a farmer's market and look for raw milk to be honest with you we're going to talk more about that in another video controversial i know but there's really no health risk in it at all but i'm not i'm just not buying i'm just I'm not buying a1 a1 milk anymore for my family it is going to be a2 dairy so i hope that was helpful i know it was a lot of information but it's exciting especially for you guys that have kids or maybe you are one of those people that just can't handle again it's bcm7 fragment that you can't handle it's a type of a protein that is an a1 and it is causing distress 
and it is so it, and when it when you link it to a lot of other diseases it's just not worth it it's not worth the extra couple dollars that you're going to spend on the a2 dairy so thank you again and remember i am on instagram i'm on twitter i'm on facebook lindy ford nutrition and wellness please look me up tell me you saw me on youtube i'd love to hear from you and uh, also just remember that everyone deserves the freedom of A2 Dairy and to live their best life. Thank you. Bye-bye.